Hi, I'm Doc Jenny. Join us in the Green Hornet as we travel the back roads of beautiful North Idaho. Every day is different, challenging, and never boring as we see all the farm animals, big and small. Hey everybody, this is Doc Jenny. Hey, we're talking a little bit about health certificates and the Coggins test, which is required to travel uh, between the states. So um, this is a very, very important test. This is uh, regulated across the nation so that uh, we can stay on top of a dangerous disease for our equine population called equine infectious anemia. The test, called the, commonly called the Coggins test, is named after the gentleman that invented it. And this is a test that is performed with a simple blood draw, and it is required for, most, for horses to travel between uh, the states uh, and for international travel as well. And so um, depending on what state you are traveling to, you may be required to perform that test either annually or every six months. So um, uh, recently we've gone to using a digital system in order to manage all of these uh, Coggins, which is great because we used to have to actually draw a picture of all the horse's markings. And so depending on how artistic either the veterinarian was or the veterinary technician was, the, um, the paper Coggins weren't always very accurate for what the horse looks like. So with this new digital system, not only is it providing us a way to better identify the horses, but it's also uh, with having everybody on one system, it's gonna allow us more efficient tracking of disease. So while it's generally used specifically for Coggins, uh, because of this system and if we're using it correctly, we can track disease outbreaks as well. So for example, uh, if you had been to a futurity or something uh, where there had been an outbreak of equine herpes virus, which can be um, a deadly disease in the equestrian community because it can mutate into the neurologic form of equine herpes virus, which can uh, cause a horse to go down and unable to get up. It causes untreatable neurologic disease in the horse. And so uh, this will allow us to reach out to everybody that had filled out a health certificate to attend that event and quickly disseminate information so that we can hopefully halt the spread of the disease. With the current situation and the coronavirus going on, it's, it would be nice if we had something like that for humans too, wouldn't it? But in our equine community and, and in our companion animals and in our production animals, uh, this system is a great way to keep track of animal movement within the country and hopefully stay on top of disease. So um, there's different requirements depending on which state you're going to. Uh, there is an extended equine health certificate that is good for six months. And um, with this new system, you can you apply for the permits to enter many of the states themselves. But especially here in the West, each state has a little different requirement. So it's important to um, talk both to your veterinarian and to look up on the website here that we're gonna show you to make sure that you're meeting the requirements for that state. So this is the website. Um, it's called Global Vet Link. It's globalvetlink.com. And this is what you are going to see when your veterinarian sets up an account for you. And that'll usually be done the first time they see your horse uh, to perform a digital Coggins or health certificate. So this is for uh, one of my clients here. Uh, so this is an owner page here. And you can see she's got two horses that are listed in her animals. And so if we click here on Butch, what comes up is all of the information on um, how old Butch is, what breed he is, what color he is. Uh, his markings. It has all of the things that we have done for Butch in the past. So it has um, two EIAs here, which is equine infectious anemia. That's the Coggins test. So this has the tests from uh, 2019 and 2020. It also has a health certificate that we did for Butch to travel. This was probably the one that he went to California on last fall. And then this is his extended health certificate. So we had to issue both of those. You can see here it says Equine Extended Certificate of Veterinary Inspection. And this one is just a Certificate of Veterinary Inspection. But all those are listed under the horse. You can download these. You can look at all the places that Kari went with Butch because you can see the permits that she applied for. So um, you can uh, either carry these digitally or you can pull them up and then have a downloadable form so that you can still carry a paper version as well. 
And now this is just the Coggins form. It says up here at the top, EIA, which is equine infectious anemia again, supported by the Global Vet Link site. And these are kind of nice because it's got all of the information on the owner, including an email address. It's got some really nice pictures of Butch. Oh, look, his little buddy Tor is in there too. So, um, and this one was the one for this year. It's got the date down here for uh, 2020. So all of that is here available for the owner. So if you lose it or um, you uh, can't find your information, it's all there for you to be able to get to at any time. You can also look here. So you've got your list of the animals here and then your certificates are here. And again, for both Butch and her other horse Sloan, we've got the equine infectious anemia here. We've got a CVI here, and this is the extended health certificate here. So let's pull this one up. It's gonna tell you right away that there's different states that require different ID requirements. So you need to make sure that whatever state you're going to, you've got the right uh, requirements on there. So let's say Kari is planning a trip with her horse, Butch, to go across the border into Washington assuming that we're able to actually do that at some point. So we would go over here to create a, a permit. And this is something that you're gonna do as an owner every time you cross the border. So it may seem like a little bit of extra work, but this can be done from a mobile app. You can do it in the trailer on the way to wherever you're going, as long as it's filed before you cross the border. So you put in your date that you're gonna be traveling there and why you're gonna be traveling there. And they have all kinds of preloaded options, uh, medical treatment, let's say you're going to another veterinary facility, show, pleasure, training. So select whichever reason that you're traveling to. And then um, your origin is gonna be the address that you're coming from. I don't know why it doesn't preload this. If the GVL folks are watching, that would be really nice to preload that so you don't have to enter that in every time. And then you also are required to have a full physical uh, address for whichever location you're going to. Now, I get asked all the time, what if it's just a trailhead or something like that? And then my recommendation is that you um, list the trailhead that you're going to and then the ranger station, the closest ranger station for whatever trailhead that you're traveling to if there is no physical address. And then uh, once you've entered in all that, you'll click finish permit and then they'll issue a permit number for you. And then you're set to go for wherever you need to go. So before you travel, it's also a good idea to um, check over here into the help section. And there's a section here called animalregs.com. And this will allow you to look up what the requirements are for whichever state that you're traveling to. So we are in Idaho here. So we put that we're going from Idaho and we're going to, these are all the states that recognize this digital system and are part of it. So we're gonna say that we're going over here to Washington and that we're taking some horses, so equine, and that it'll tell us what our requirements are. And so um, this tells us uh, exactly what we need to have in order to cross the borders. Uh, if you are traveling with an intact stallion, some states will have other requirements for the stallion, but for most horses, um, you're gonna need an official equine infectious anemia test that is negative within the last 12 months. And then um, and your, uh, your health certificate that goes with that. So, um, it, this is good for whichever state that you're traveling to and it tells you exactly the requirements that you need and they keep it pretty well updated. It's also a good idea um, if you are traveling to another state to Google the import requirements specifically for that state. Sometimes they'll have a link to the Department of Agriculture over here for that area, uh, but it's a good idea to double check just to make sure that this, this which is um, supported through GVL, is on the same page as whatever state that you're traveling to because sometimes those requirements change. So what we've been talking about today is just the Coggins and health certificate that is required for interstate travel. We just want to encourage everybody to follow the local laws and the state laws for uh, traveling between the states and for the Coggins testing. It's important for keeping our, healthy, our population healthy and it sets us up in a way that we can mitigate any disease problems that can potentially crop up. So make sure that your horses are on board and in the system and have all the tests that they are required before you travel across state lines. And make sure that you plan well in advance for that. 
There's nothing that any vet hates more than getting an emergency phone call because someone is leaving the next day and they forgot to get their Coggins or their health certificate done. We don't consider those to be an emergency. A little pre-planning goes a long ways. These are good for six months in many areas or 30 days in others, so you've got plenty of time to plan for it. So remember uh, to get all your paperwork done well in advance and safe travels out there. Hey everybody, thanks for riding with us in the Green Hornet today. This is Doc Jenny signing out. If you like what you saw, be sure and follow us in the Green Hornet with Tormund out on the road with Doc Jenny. Just click the link below and follow us along on our journeys. See you later.